What is up guys, Randomodium here. So uh, I know I'm a little bit behind the power curve and uh, a lot of people have already released videos, but I figure it's kind of my obligation to discuss all the announcements that Riot has made uh, in the past 24 hours. For those of you who have been living under a rock, there's been uh, quite a lot of announcements. Riot had their 10 year celebration uh, yesterday night and they announced quite a few new games and uh, a lot of other things. I wanna go over kind of some of the smaller stuff first, and I'll get into more of the, the bigger announcements. Um, and I definitely wanna focus more on like my thoughts on the announcements, since I think that's where the value is. Uh, you can look up the announcements pretty much anywhere, but I know you guys come to this channel because you guys wanna hear my thoughts. Um, so yeah. So they've got the, the full thing here, the full, uh, Riot, please. They're going to have Earth come back. That's kind of one of the minor things that they talked about. It's going to be classic Earth. Um, so, yes, no uh, all random Earth, which I guess is pretty cool. Um, it's been a while since they've had it. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are excited on that. I'm not horribly excited because I don't play a ton of Earth. Um, but I know a lot of people are going to get really excited about this. They're also bringing Arabic to the new client. I was actually assuming that they were going to announce like a whole like North Africa or Middle East server, but it sounds like they're just going to, the people in those areas are still going to play on EUS or something like that. Um, and they're just going to be offering Arabic. I'm assuming that eventually they'll move into actually having a, uh, a Middle East or a Northern Africa server, but I guess they're not at that point yet. Um, so I guess that's good news for those people who play in those regions. Big one here is that they've just released all of the um, League of Legends music on Spotify. Um, a lot of the music was already on SoundCloud, for those of you guys who don't know. But now you also have it on Spotify, for those who, who use Spotify. And this is very cool. I'm going to be uh, listening to a lot of that music. I've actually been working on a playlist on SoundCloud that I might release to you guys sometime in the future on what I think are the best League of Legends tracks. <clears throat> um, they're also going to be having free rewards starting October 17th. So every day you log in, you'll get a new reward. So make sure you log in every single day starting October 17th uh, for 11 days, I think it is. Uh, and that includes like gemstones, the Annie Timo Bear skin, a um, bunch of other stuff, that you, other rewards you can get. So that's kind of a thank you that they're doing, but you have to log in every day in order to get all the rewards. Your shop is returning and you have the chance of getting the, um, the really expensive skin. So previously you could only get, I think, like, what is it, the 1350 RP skins? Um, but now you can get like the 1820. Um, and I don't know if you can get like the legendary skins, like the really expensive ones, but you can at least get the the uh, 1800 roughly price range for RP skins. <clears throat> they also have a, a uh, documentary coming out. So it's going to be on Netflix, iTunes, PlayStation, Google Play, Microsoft, Amazon, Fandango, and Vudu. Um, so yeah, this is basically just kind of like the League of Legends, like what happened, how League of Legends became big. I haven't watched it yet, but I do plan on watching it uh, probably later this week. And then one of the other big things that they announced was the Riot Games Social Impact Fund. So we've had, God, we had the the Earthwick skin, the Nurse Akali skin, the Jaximus skin, the uh, uh, Darkstar Cho'Gath skin. All of them were fundraiser skins that raised millions and millions of dollars um for charity uh, i believe also was a championship ash it was one of the ash skins that also had fundraising associated with it and now it looks like they're going to make this kind of a regular thing so the next one is is a karma skin i forget the exact name of it i think it's like dawnbringer or something like that dawnbringer karma it looks really cool i wasn't able to find a image of it unfortunately it was shown somewhere in the the whole big announcement um, but I, I lost the photo, unfortunately. So I'm definitely going to be supporting this. I will buy every single skin that Riot uh, says goes to charity. And the, the good news is that all of these skins that are for the Social Impact Fund, 100% of the proceeds go towards the charity. 
Uh, so it's basically kind of Riot's way of giving back, which I'm, I always will support uh, 100%. So, uh, and I encourage you guys to do it as well. It's kind of just a little way that we can show that we care about the larger community and those that are less fortunate uh, than us. So now on to some of the bigger announcements. So the first one that I want to talk about is the new animated series that's coming out um, called Arcane. Uh, they haven't announced, to my knowledge, where it's going to actually play. Is it just going to be free on the League of Legends website? Is it going to be on something like Netflix or Hulu or uh, Amazon Prime or something like that? Um, they haven't said how it's going to... Um, how you're going to be able to watch it yet but it looks really really cool the animation looks really crisp a lot of people are thinking that it's most likely going to be an origin story for vi and jinx they've said that this character obviously looks like a young vi and this character looks like a young jinx mainly because of the the hair the blue hair and the pink hair um the other thing that they kind of hint at uh in the trailer that might uh, let you think that this is an origin story for uh, champions in League of Legends, like it's set before the present day in League of Legends, is they have this tagline that every legend um, has a beginning. So my guess is that this is going to be an origin story for multiple League of Legends champions, and the most likely ones, obviously, are Jinx and Vi. We might get Warwick, we might get Singe, we might get a few other of these Zaun, Piltover champions. Um, kind of getting a little bit more insight into their origin stories. Looks very cool, looks very stylish. Uh, very excited for that. Um, yeah, I, I have nothing nothing bad to say. It looks really cool. I'll provide as many of these links as I can in the video description below so you guys can watch them all rather than me just playing them for you within this video. I want to try and keep this as short as possible. So the next big thing is... I'm going to run through these really f I'm going to run through all the the game announcements that they have and I'll talk a little bit more about them in depth. So, Team Fight Tactics coming to mobile, uh League of Legends uh coming to mobile and consoles. They've been calling it Wild Rift, so you won't be playing with people in the League client. It's it's separated. So, it's not like you're going to get like an auto-filled support who's playing on a, a phone or something like that. Um they have a tactical shooter that's called Project A. They've got a, um, looks like it's an action RPG that's uh, titled Project F. They've got a fighting game that's titled Project L. They've got a board game that they showed a few screen, the few like frames of. Um, they've got an esports team builder game that's going to be coming. It's an esports like manager game. Uh, I'm assuming that that's not going to be the same as Fantasy LCS, that this is, that Fantasy LCS will also be introduced sometime next year. I'm crossing my fingers on that because I really like Fantasy LCS. And then also they've got the card game Legends of Runeterra that looks like it's the most well-developed. Um, and yeah, it's the most further along and there's actually even, you can actually play it. So I'll play a little bit of the video. So this is the mobile League of Legends. You can see that it looks very similar to a lot of the other mobile uh, games that they've got. This is the fighting game, looks extremely crisp. Art style looks really cool. This is the action RPG. Uh, and this is the card game, uh, Legends of Runeterra. And this is the first person shooter game that they're working on. It looks like it's gonna be kind of a cross between Overwatch and CSGO. Um, so yeah, those are all the games that they've got. So they've already got websites up for uh, Wild Rift, so you can sign up for the open beta. So I highly recommend you do that. And this is for the eSports Manager. This is something that I'm really interested in because I love I love eSports in general. I love I think that this would be very cool that you get to manage your team, and it looks like you get to do all sorts of you know pick your roster, pick your strategy. I think I'm going to really enjoy this. It's going to start with just the LPL. Which I guess I guess it makes sense because the LPL is like a really really competitive region. I think they probably chose the LPL because China is kind of like the biggest consumer of League of Legends right now, and obviously Riot is owned by Tencent, so that it, they've got that going for them as well. Um, but they said they will have it come out to more regions in the future, so I can't wait to 
uh, have double lift and Bjergsen on the same team again or something like that. I don't know what I'm going to do. But, you know, basically you can create your own super team or bring up new prospects and uh, groom them, things like that. But I think the thing that I'm most excited about is Legends of Runeterra. This game is looks very polished, and they have actually have a... I don't know if you would call it a open beta or a closed beta, um, but you can play it right now. You can actually pre-register and you can actually play the game right now. I actually have it on my computer. I've played it. It's really, really fun. <laughs> like I, I think it's hands down uh, more fun to, at least in my opinion, than both Magic and um, Hearthstone and Gwent. I, I love card games. I play as many card games as I can. Uh, this one is actually my favorite right now. Uh, I know it's new, and obviously I'm biased because I'm, I'm I'm a League of Legends person. But just the way that the the rounds play out is really fast. There's a lot of strategic depth. You've got to play around the hero cards, um, and it, what's really cool is that everybody gets to play cards on both turns. And anytime you play a card, then your opponent gets the chance to play a card. So you have to be very strategic. It's not like you just drop all your cards out of your hand and just you know blindly attack. Like, if you play a card, that gives your your opponent a chance to play a counter card. So you have to really assess whether you want to all in, basically, with what you have on the table, or whether you want to risk putting down another card and possibly get countered with a really big card that they have in their hand. So there's a lot of strategy, a lot of depth. You want to try and keep your champion's cards alive long enough that they can level up and they gain new abilities. Um... Yeah, it's very cool. They they have cards based off of the different regions. They've got Demacia, Noxus, Pilter, Piltover Zon, Shadow Isles, Ionia, um, and Freljord. Each one of them has different play styles. Each one of them has different strengths and weaknesses, very much like uh, the different uh, types in Magic the Gathering. You can have up to two factions per deck, so they do limit you on how many factions you can have. Um but it, it feels really fun. I, I really recommend you guys try to sign up for this. Try to play it. It's really fun. The other thing I really like about it is that it's not going to be... It doesn't look like it's, it's going to be pay to win. I can't say that it's not going to be pay to win because it's still very early. But there's you're not, you don't buy packs. That's the first thing that like really hit home for me is that there's no buying packs in this game. You can get packs. You can unlock packs by playing the game. But you don't buy packs. You actually have to buy cards. So it takes away a lot of the gambler's um, stuff that that is so associated with these card games. And that makes it really, really interesting to me because it feels like they, they really want to try and... They understand that the real fun of card games is being able to really try out a lot of different cool combinations and decks. Um, it seems like they really got their heads on straight when it comes to this game and i am really excited for it probably more excited than anything else i would say card game uh legends of Ruteria is probably what i'm most excited about the second one is probably actually the the action rpg that's the one that's probably the furthest away that was the one they showed the least amount of footage on um but i'm really looking forward to like an action rpg type game where i actually get to explore the world of Runeterra. that seems very cool um and then the esports manager of course uh, I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to play that game. Uh, probably the only game that I'm not super interested in, unfortunately, is the 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 first person shooter. I don't play a lot of first person shooter games. I'm absolutely horrible at them. I'm pretty good at fighting games. I used to play a lot of Soul Calibur, so I'll definitely pick up the uh, fighting game that they come out with. But I probably won't play their um, their first person shooter that much, unfortunately. So that gets out of the way all of the big game announcements now we can actually talk about league of legends um senna the new champion that's coming out the champion roadmap and we can talk about preseason 2020 so as they've been hinting the next champion is going to be senna lucian's wife uh, they released this cinematic which is absolutely beautiful i think it's the same um the same animators who did the climb video for the beginning of 2018 because the lucian's model looks pretty much identical but this is senna she gets released from thresh's lantern i'll play a little bit with the sound off um but you can see that she's got this massive cannon i think they call it a runic cannon or something like that she fires the blast at lucian it looks like she's gonna hurt him 
is you have this stone face on, but then you actually find out that she's actually protecting Lucian from Thresh's hook. That's super freaking cool. So my guess is that this ability is probably going to be some type of ability where you can shoot it through an ally, and that extends the range of the ability, uh, and it also protects the ally, and it deals damage or it has some other effect, like a knockback or something, on any target it hits beyond your ally. Uh, they have said that Senna is going to be a marksman support, so I'm very curious to see how they um, they come up with that. They also released a new story uh, talking about Senna, really fleshing out who Senna is and who Lucian is a little bit more. Uh, really great story, definitely recommend you read it. But at the, at the end, they talk a little bit about her abilities. Um, let me see if I can find it real fast. Yeah, so it says wielding a relic stone cannon that could channel darkness along with light. So that leads me to believe that she's going to have some ability. She's going to have both light abilities and dark abilities, um, which is kind of a cool premise. Is we're going to have like a light and dark champion. And then also... This right here. Embracing her death every time she transforms into a wraith. She becomes like those she fought, only to be reborn again thanks to the life infecting her. So I'm guessing that's probably her ultimate. She has some type of wraith form. I'm curious to see if the wraith form is going to trigger whether or not she's light or dark. Maybe she's going to basically uh, be kind of like Jace or some other one of these transforming champions where she's got light abilities and then she presses R and then she has dark abilities on her QWE instead. I think that'd be really cool if, they, if they're if they able to pull that off. But those um, the shape-changing champions are always very hard to execute. Um, very hard to balance sometimes because obviously you have to balance two sets of abilities. But uh, I'm hoping that's what it is. I'm hoping that she's a, she's a shape-changing champion that has light and dark abilities. I think that would be very uh, cool, very thematic. And I'm uh, highly looking forward to... What they do with Senna and, and when they re release her abilities, which I'm hoping is going to be within the next couple days. So let's get to the champion roadmap. Um, so yeah, we've already talked about Senna. She's her title is the Redeemer. Yeah, you can see the dark and the light there. So I'm guessing yeah, there's definitely dark and light thematics that are going to go on with this champion. Uh, the next champion they talk about, um, they basically hint that this is a Lunari champion i believe it's gonna be a lunari um marksman is what they were yeah they said a, a new marksman raised since birth with only one purpose to protect the faith from those who stand in the sun so my guess is it's a lunari marksman um and they talk about mastering diverse weapons of faith swapping through them like cycles of the moon with nothing but that one lone voice pushing comforting loving so Obviously, it's going to be a high skill cap uh, marksman who has multiple weapons. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to cycle through. If it's going to be another thing where they cycle through on their R, so they basically can unlock different abilities when they cycle through weapons, or if it's going to be something like Jinx, where Jinx has got you know three weapons, but the her uh, abilities are tied to those weapons. Um, so yeah, it'd be going to be very interesting to see how they do this Lunari uh, marksman that's coming out sometime in the near future this next one was really interesting to me uh this is going to be an ionian juggernaut <laughs> so and they said a smoking hot new juggernaut so my guess is that maybe it has he's got smoke or fire to do with his kit um they said they were going to be he's going to be straightforward accessible similar to darius um thrive in the center of a brawl laughing as they take hit after hit and then furiously punching back, releasing all that stored aggression on their enemies' faces. My guess is that he's going to have some type of ability where the more damage he takes, he gets a damage amp amplifier um, that he can activate that's based on how much damage he takes. Uh, it says if you like to let, let your fist do the talking, so he's going to actually probably be a fist champion as opposed to somebody who uses a weapon. Um, and he says if you like getting in the heat of a pit fight so they another reference to heat and smoke here so they talked about fire heat smoke 
Um, so yeah, he's going to have some type of fire thematic that goes along with him. And smashing your opponent's head together, this may be the champion for you. Does sound like the champion for me. I love me some juggernauts. I love me some people who can take a dish uh, beating. Um, I definitely like cage fighting myself. I've been training in MMA for a decade now. So this might be a new main champion for me. We'll see if he can actually jungle or if I'm only allowed to play him in top lane. Um, but yeah, very excited for this new Juggernaut champion. Next up, they've got Fiddlesticks. Pretty cool. It looks like they've got he's mechanized more now. Um, so that's an interesting stylistic choice if that's what they're going to go for. Um, you can see he's got this kind of... I don't know what, what you would call it. It's almost like he's possessed here. He's got this ridge of this black and red. And it's also on his uh, scythe. Um, and they said that he's going to be a fear-based champion. Which I think is definitely the the closest thematic that we're definitely going towards. He's probably going to have some type of mechanic where he spawns clones of himself. And you don't know which one is the right uh, fiddlesticks. That's what it sounds like. Um, yeah, experienced fiddlesticks players will wreak mental havoc on their victims as they question what is real and what is merely a terrifying effigy. So he's going to be able to create effigies of himself. Um, so yeah, very cool. He will have a point and click fear that they say. Yeah, they say point and click status. Oh, they don't say it's a fear. They say a point and click status effect, which is staying in the kit. But they kind of hint that it's a fear. And the final one they talk about. Actually, no, never mind. Not the final one. Um, it's Volley Bear. So it looks like they're going more towards the God Volley Bear as opposed to the Eldritch Horror Volley Bear. Um, so I'm kind of disappointed in that. I was hoping that Volley Bear was going to go more towards that, that kind of Call of Cthulhu type vibe. But it looks like they're going to go more towards the, um, the God version of Volley Bear. And it looks like they're also going away from the permanent unstoppability idea instead going in a new direction making him feel more like god of storms so he's going to probably bring down thunder on his enemies and structures that they hide behind so it looks like he's going to have some ability that allows him to take towers quickly um, maybe some type of aoe ability like kennen um, where he can just call down thunder and lightning so that seems very cool yeah it says that they they don't they don't want, it seems like Volley Bear mains don't want the grotesque core visual design. They feel like it strays too far from the original Volley Bear. And that's pretty much it. So, yeah. Oh, and they said that they also have a whimsical new jungler as well as an edgy solo lane melee carry in the works. Um, but they don't really discuss anything else about those champions. So, yeah, I'm very excited. Obviously, I'm excited for Senna. She seems very cool. I love me uh, a Lunari character. Diana's my most played champion. So, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to another Lunari. Uh, this Juggernaut from Ionia, who is a fire theme, seems very cool. You can even see in the picture that they post here that there's a lot of... F it looks like a fire here. So there's definitely fire thematics everywhere. Multiple fires in the corners of the pit. So, yeah, definitely going to be like a fire-themed Juggernaut. Uh, brawler type that I think would be very cool and then obviously fiddle six and volley bear are definitely disappointed they're not going more towards uh, the horror themed volley bear they're going more towards the Thor volley bear but you win some you lose some okay on to the last thing that we're going to talk about which is the preseason 2020 update I know this video is already long um, but hopefully you guys will stick around for this last part so they're going to call uh, season 10 or season 2020 is going to be Rise of the Elements. I don't know if they're going to do this every year or if it's going to be every couple years. But this, this next season is going to be Rise of the Elements. And they're going to be focusing on the elemental drakes and have them influence um, how, the, how it changes the map. So I'll zoom in for you guys real fast. You can read this a little better. So basically, um, the third drake will transform the rift before it spawns, and then after that, its, its element will be the only one to spawn for the remainder of the game. So if the third drake is infernal, then it's going to create new pathways um, throughout Summoner's Rift. So you can see right here that, they've, that the red buff has had parts of the red buff destroyed. So... I can't 
click off of it unless I'm zoomed out a little bit more. All right, Ocean Drake. It's going to cause additional brushes to spawn. It's going to make the brushes larger, allow you to have more opportunities to hide and sneak. There you go. You can see extra brushes right here. So there's a huge brush there. This one's longer. They've got another brush in the dragon pit. Um, yeah, so lots of extra brushes. Cloud, uh, what happens is it's going to create wind currents that allow you to go a lot faster in those areas. So you can see that there's this wind pattern. I don't know if it's going to be that like you move faster in one direction but slower in another, or if it's just that regardless of what direction you move, you move faster through those areas. But it could make rotating, um, you know, a lot quicker, and it can allow you to collapse some people a lot faster. And the last one would be mountain. It's going to create additional um, rock areas, like additional walls and stuff. So you can see there's an additional wall here in Dragon Pit, and there's an additional wall. Um, between red buff and Krug, so this pathway gets uh, smaller. So, going to fundamentally change how the game is played. Going to fundamentally change um, each game is going to be different. So you can even if you have the two same teams, one time you're playing with Ocean, the next time you're playing with Infernal. Um, so yeah, it's going to it's going to be a big deal. I think it's going to be a huge deal at at the competitive level, or probably less of a big deal at uh, lower levels. The next one is that they want to make sure that the elemental rifts are fair to both teams, and that also carries over to the Elder Drake. Um, so yeah, so they're trying. They re they realize that, that Drake's a lot of times if one team gets them, it's kind of an anti snowball mechanic, and it feels like impossible um, for other teams to contest for Drakes. So that's very cool. Um, so then yeah, so the elemental uh, buffs are going to change. So infernal is still the same attack damage and ability power uh, Ocean still roughly the same a percentage of missing health every second. It seemed really strong in the videos that I've seen uh, For cloud you get cooldown reduction on your ultimate ability, which seems really cool So if you combine that with ultimate hunter and I believe it's presence of mind I don't know what <laughs> how low your cooldown is going to get you could get something like 80% cooldown your ultimate if you're max CDR, something like that, which could be pretty crazy if you have certain uh, attack compositions, things like that. And then mountain, you gain a percentage increase of armor and magic resist. This would be great for, you know, obviously teams that have multiple tanks or to counter teams that have assassins because a little bit of armor goes a long way uh, against assassin types. Uh, and then after you kill the fourth elemental drake instead of stacking the elemental buff They'll gain a powerful dragon soul from the dominant dragon So the infernal dragon soul every three seconds your next attack or damaging spell creates an aoe explosion uh, the deals uh, Adaptive damage and skills to bonus attack damage ability power and bonus health So it gives a damage buff to everyone regardless of whether you're a carry or a tank uh, Ocean Dragon and dealing any damage triggers a strong health and resource regeneration for three seconds So this is in combat regeneration. So this is very strong um, If you're trying to out DPS somebody Cloud Dragon soul hitting enemies with your abilities or attacks lowers the cooldowns of your base ability So it's basically a spear of Shojin for the entire team um, and then Mountain Dragon soul after not taking damage for five seconds, you gain a shield that lasts until destroyed. The shield's magnitude skills with bonus attack damage, ability power, and bonus health. So everybody benefits from the shield. So another anti-burst mechanic potentially in the game. Uh, after you take, after one team has claimed the Dragon Soul, then the Elder Dragon spawns. Um, so yeah, only one team can get the Dragon Soul. And the Elder Dragon is now going to have a um, basically an execute on it. So I can see if I can show you this. The Twitch comes up, he stealths. Lulu's right there. And then once you get to a certain threshold, you can see an Elder Dragon comes up and it basically executes the Lulu. Kind of cool. Seems like it's gonna be pretty OP, but uh, yeah, we'll see about that. Um, and it does say that there will be time for you to potentially like counterplay it. There will be a, a, a wind up. Um, so you can basically 
avoid it with Zonia's Kindred's Ultimate, Heals, Shield, things like that. Um, yeah, so overall, I think this is going to be... I don't know. It's it's going to be cool, but I think that people are always going to say that this is kind of gimmicky. Um, I think that what this does is it definitely will force strategic decision-making, especially at the pro level, um, which is usually a good thing. It's going to encourage a lot of fighting, especially for this the Dragon Soul, because that's something that only one team can get. And then obviously the Elder Dragon seems really, really powerful. Um, they're also adding side lane alcoves and brush. So you can see there's this little side lane alcove. Uh, this is going to be, I'm not exactly sure how um, players are going to use these. I think this is going to favor melee champions more than ranged champions because melee champions can use it to basically prevent line of sight. Um, I think Singe is going <laughs> is to really abuse it. Um, but I think that you're going to see some really cool gank paths potentially as well from junglers. They can basically do lane ganks a little bit easier. I'm not sure exactly how the vision is going to work, like how far back you have to be in order to not see somebody walking from this brush into behind this alcove. I'll have to test it out once it comes out. Um, they've also added brush to near blue buff, uh, this little patch right here. So you can see, yeah, right there. So this prevents a lot of the early invades because... You basically just has five stack in this brush. If anybody walks up this ramp, they're they're basically toast. So this might be uh, kind of a prevention of early cheese potentially. Okay, what else? So they're also going to be changing um, X, uh, XP um, so that it's not so highly dependent upon Krugs. So they're basically going to buff Gromp so that. You can get level three if you kill uh, a buff, Gromp or Krugs, and then any other third camp. This is going to really benefit a lot of single target junglers who can clear Gromp very quickly. Um, I'm thinking like Warwick, Zen Zhao, those type of champions. Um, I'm going to really love it because I love playing Warwick. And yeah, I could see this. You could get level three very fast on those type of junglers. Uh, they've also added respawn timers on the minimap for every camp to help junglers plan their next moves. Don't really like this because I feel like this is making the game too easy. You should know what your jungle spawn camp timers are. You shouldn't need to look at the map to know that your Krogs are coming up or that your Gromp is coming up. Um, but yeah, I do like the fact that they're going to make it so that there are more options for you getting level 3 early so you can actually impact the map because there aren't that many junglers who can who can impact the map at level 2. Okay, top lane influence. This has definitely been a problem. Uh, top laners have been feeling very kind of neglected and I definitely can uh, empathize with them. Um, so what they're going to be doing is that they're going to be increasing base minion XP slightly, so soul laners level a bit faster, and we're reducing the amount of bonus experience generated when allies share XP, so bot lane levels will go a little bit more slowly, and we're also slightly decreasing jungle experience. Um, I, th I definitely like that they're going to increase the experience for the solo laners, I feel like this could cause mid lane to be even more powerful than it already is because I feel like mid lane right now is already probably the most powerful role. Uh, I definitely think top lane needs some love. I was assuming they were going to do it in some other way that was going to make top make it top lane specific, um, but it looks like both top lane and mid lane will get that EXP boost. Um, I don't like that jungler EXP is going down, obviously, because I'm a jungler, but I also think that that is going to make it much harder for some junglers to be effective because you're always going to be at least one level, maybe even two, depending on how drastic the changes are, uh, levels down on the mid laner and the top laner, which means ganking those lanes uh, harder, which means that you're going to be more likely to want to gank bot lane um, because those those champions are going to be around your level. So it's going to make the the bot lane ganking meta even stronger which is probably a bad thing. Um, so I don't know if I necessarily agree with the whole decreasing jungler XP thing. And then additionally, because they are reducing the amount of bonus XP uh, generated when allies share XP, 
This is going to mean the junglers are going to get flamed a whole hell of a lot more when they try to soak experience from their lanes. So if you're trying to push out the lane because pushing out the lane is the right call, you're more likely to get flamed by your mid lane or your top laner because you're stealing experience from them. It's also going to make it so that grouping is... Um, there's more of a cost associated with grouping um, because you're gonna get less experience shared between all of the allies. So it's gonna make side lane control uh, a lot more powerful. It's gonna be kind of a buff to people who wanna run a 1-4 composition or a 1-3-1 composition, uh, which I think is good because I think split pushing is pretty weak right now, uh, especially against coordinated teams. So we might see some more split pushers coming out as a result of this, but so yeah, overall, I like the changes. I just don't like the jungle experience change because it's going to make it very hard to gank mid lane and top lane, uh, which is going to drive the whole snowball bot lane meta even more. And it's also going to push certain junglers, I think, out of the meta. Uh, it's going to make jungle even a more useless role in like the late game. If you can't keep up in levels, then you're going to be forced probably more onto... Uh, basically, the early game jungler is going to be more feast or famine, and you're going to be... More, li more likely forced onto tank junglers who don't need a lot of levels and items to scale as well. Um, so it's almost like jungle's going to be kind of a, like a second support again, which I definitely, I don't like. I would prefer that there's jungle diversity and that you can play both carries and tanks and support in the jungle. Uh, support items, so they're, ref they're changing the support items, so now they're making it so that you don't actually have to buy your support, you don't have to buy upgrades to your support items. It basically is going to be a quest line where you start off with tier 1, which is starting stats and passive goal generation. Uh, tier 2, you get more improved stats and 3 wards, and then tier 3, you get a lot more stats, 4 wards, and the goal generation passive is removed. Seems pretty cool because you don't have to devote that extra, I forget how much gold it was, at least a thousand gold to go into that first item as a support. Now you can go right into boots, an early boots play, which is going to probably encourage more roaming uh, for the support, uh, which makes even more sense because solo lane experience is going to be a lot higher. So if a support goes to uh, roam and gank mid lane or top lane, then that means your bot lane is getting solo experience, so he's going to get a level advantage potentially, which could be a good trade-off. So I think you're going to see a lot more roaming supports uh, with this type of a meta. You'll be able to rush in early boots too. Um, so yeah, you'll see a lot more Blitzcranks, Pikes, Nautilus, Alistar, Bard, those type of champions that are good at roaming. Um, and they're going to have four starting support items. So it's basically going to be high AD, low HP Spell Thief, high AP, low HP Spell Thief, Low AD, high HP Targons, and low AP, high HP Targons. So you basically get four options depending on whether you want more health or less health, and whether you want to go AD or uh, AP. And they're move removing coin as well. So they're also going to add a poaching rule, which significantly reduces the gold you get from minions if you're farming them consistently. So no more going... Um, support item on a top laner or a mid laner um so yeah that's probably a good thing lethality items are also getting a uh not a rework but a tune-up so dust blade is still the same ghost blade is the same edge of night spell shield now works like banshee's veil uh they're gonna add sanguine blade which is a new lethality item that enables split pushing and it, it's unique passive grants a huge attack speed buff with no allies when you're by so damn, so now they've got a, a split pushing item to go along with the fact that split pushing is going to be more effective because solo lane experience is going to go up. So we could see uh, the rise of the split push meta uh, in season 10. And then they're also going to add a few more potentially uh, more lethality options that will be on the, the PPE. Um, but they're also going to make it so that they don't want to make it so that you just like go like straight lethality every single game. So say so they're going to have set bonuses that so they're going to have to lethality. So you get basically uh, a set bonus up to two items, but after two items, you don't gain any more set bonuses. They've done this something similar with uh, the mage items where they've got the, the cooldown unique passive um, that gives you an extra 10% cooldown if you choose one of those three items. They're removing Spear of Shojin, but remember, they've added basically a Spear of Shojin-like ability if you get the uh, uh, Cloud Drake Soul. 
Um, and yeah, they're looking for other small Im improvements that they can make. They're going to be tweaking a few keystones. So Conquer is going to be more like uh, Fervor of Battle. Uh, they're removing the um, the true damage conversion because I feel like it's pushed tanks too much out of the meta. Uh, unfortunately, because of all the changes they're, they're making and all the strengths that they're adding to split pushing, tanks still may be forced out of the meta, at least in top lane. Uh, Kleptomancy is going to be changed so that it gives less gold against... Um, against enemies and instead gives more like early game elixir drops so rip ezreal i guess or rip a lot of the range top laners who are abusing uh kleptomancy and then aftershock um they want to address the people who are squishy who are, who are, who are abusing aftershock which i think is good aftershock should be a tank rune so my guess is that it's going to yeah it's going to be more on the uh bonus resistances rather than base flat resistances that you get so that's everything. Sorry that took so long. Uh, I knew this was going to be a long video. Uh, there's a lot of changes. I think that what this is going to do is it's going to, it's going to encourage more split pushing. It's going to make uh, ganking bot lane more... Um, what's the right word? It's going to be make ganking... like more favorable it's going to make it so that it's you're not going to want to gank top and mid because you're going to be at a pretty huge level disadvantage and the top laner or the mid laner could turn it around on you if your top laner or mid laner doesn't support you in the gank so it's going to make those top lane and mid lane ganks uh, more risky um because the soul lane experience is going up split pushing is going to be better it looks like they have more split pushing items that they might be introducing into the game um Drake's system is going to force some pretty serious fights to get these Dragon Souls and also to get the Elder Drake. Um, so there's going to be more team fighting in the later parts of the game uh, in order to fight around the Dragon Soul and the Elder Drake. I think they also said somewhere in here, I must have missed it, that there's going to be the opportunity that Rift Herald could be taken twice if it's taken early enough, which could be really cool. Um, I don't know where that was, but I thought I saw that somewhere. So that also is going to put a little bit more priority in top lane. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think junglers are still going to gank bot lane more than anything. Or they'll be ganking mid in order to allow mid to roam bot and to unlock a, a basically a 4v2 type of play. Um, and the mid lane roam is going to be more effective because the mid laner is going to have more experience than the jungler, the bot laner, and the support. Or even more experience. Definitely like these side lane alcoves. I think it's going to create a lot more stuff. Um, I like the jungle, uh, the changes they're making so the Gromp is going to do more experience. I think that's going to open up a lot more jungle paths. Um, I like the support changes that they're doing. I like the lethality changes they're going to doing. Um, and I like the keystone changes they're going to do as well. So I like most of the stuff they're doing. Um, but I think that if they're not careful that they're going to skew things even more harshly into being like a bot centric meta. Um, so I'm hoping that they balance that enough and i hope that they do give buffs to split pushing because i think that's a really really fun strategy to watch i really like watching teams trying to execute a split push composition it's very hard to do and i feel like it's kind of um underpowered right now so those are all my thoughts let me know what you guys think in in the uh in the comments below what do you think about the preseason changes what do you think about the new champion senna what do you think about the champion roadmap and all the other champions that they've they've uh, mentioned in here um, what do you think about all the new games that they're coming out with the first person shooter the action rpg um the card game um the fighting game <laughs> league of legends on mobile tft on mobile um the esports manager the potential board game that might be coming out there's a lot. There's, there's, I'm sure I forgot even some more stuff. Um, just let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Let me know what your opinions are on all of these topics. I know it's a lot, but uh, I hope you guys are excited. I was freaking out last night. Uh, my wife thought I was absolutely crazy because I was shouting at the at the computer monitor and saying no way a lot. And yeah, I probably should have recorded it because it's pretty hilarious, but I didn't. Um, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys have still stuck around. Thank you guys for supporting me. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. This is Ranbonium signing off.